Hello and welcome, and in this lecture we will create a bootloader that outputs the text Hello World. I will be using the Visual Studio Code Editor for writing my code. You may use any editor that you wish. We will be writing in just assembly language for this lecture. I'm now going to open up my text editor. I'm going to go File, Open Folder, I'm going to select my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder and call it Peach OS. This is what we will call our operating system for now on. Excellent. So now that the folder is open, I'm going to maximize the window and I'm going to click this new file button and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it boot.asm. So obviously you're familiar with assembly language, so we use .asm for assembly files. I'm also going to get an extension here that can help with the ASM file parsing. So I'm just going to search the marketplace here. And uh, I'm going to take this one here. This one looks good. Okay. So uh, we're now ready to start writing our bootloader. Okay, so we first need to specify our assembly origin so that the assembler knows how to offset our data. Now, if you remember correctly, I told you in the boot process lecture that the BIOS loads us into address 0x7c00. So we can tell our assembler to originate from that address. We can do that by doing this. There is a smarter way to do what I'm about to do, but obviously because this is the first tutorial, we will do it like this. Ideally, the origin should be zero, and then we do a jump to address UX 7C00. Uh, um, there's reasons for doing that, but we'll go on to that later on. Next, we need to tell the assembler that we are using 16-bit architecture. So just do bits 16. This will ensure that the assembler will only assemble assembly instructions into 16-bit code. Let's now create a start label. We will just use this to represent where we're actually going to be writing our code. What I now want you to do is I want you to move a value into the AH register. So we're going to go move AH 0EH. So if you're used to writing assembly in Windows and Linux and stuff like that, you'll be used to doing things like move EAX and all this sort of stuff, right? Well, AH is just a register of the EAX register. So, you know, you have the AX register and then the AH and AL register make those registers up. Then you have the EAX register, right? So try not to worry too much about that stuff. As long as you know modern assembly language for x86 systems, writing real mode code like this shouldn't be too difficult. You will pick it up. So here we move um, 0 eh into the AH register. Um, let's move character A into the AL register. And now I just want you to go INT 0x10. So if you're developing for Linux and Windows with Assembler, you will know that they have their own interrupts that, they, that you can call. Well, the BIOS set up a lot of different interrupts for us to call. So when we call init 0x10, we are calling the BIOS. That's exactly what we're doing. This is what I meant when I said the BIOS is like a kernel in itself. We're actually calling a BIOS routine by doing this, right? So um, what does this routine do? We're basically saying output the character A to the terminal, to the screen. That's what we're saying. So ZUEH is the command to do that. And A is the character we're printing. And if you search up Ralph Brown's interrupt list, which I will do now, you can see that this guy has documented all of these. So if I go to interrupt here, and these are all the BIOS interrupts. Remember I said it's generic, right? All the BIOSes tend to implement the same implementation. So it provides a generic across the board interface. Well, this is what I meant, right? So if we press interrupt 10 here, and if we look for our command on here, here we go, video teletype output in interrupt 10, AH equals ZUEH. So we click that. We can see display a character on the screen, advancing the cursor and scrolling if necessary. So this is a BIOS routine. And this is this is what we've just done now, basically, right? 
So we provided ZUEH in the AH register, right? That's the command. We've provided the character A in the AL register. And we haven't set the page number or foreground. But, you know, if you really want to do that, then we can just do move BX zero. And that should be absolutely fine. Okay, so there's a little more we need to do. Remember I said that we needed the boot signature 55AA on the last two bytes. Well, we need to do that, right? So go down here and we're going to go times 510 dollar dash dollar dollar db0. And then down here, just go DW 0x AA55. Now, the reason I've done AA55 and not 55AA is because remember, Intel machines are little endium, so the bytes get flipped when working with words. So this will actually be written as 55AA. So, what does this times 510 thing do? Well, it says that we need to fill at least 510 bytes of data. That's what it says. So if we use 510 bytes of data in our code, then this won't output anything, right? But if we don't, it'll pad the rest with zeros. So let's say we only use 500 bytes in our code, right? Then it will pad the, the extra 10 bytes with zeros. So it fills it to the end, and then this allows us to just go DW, and, and we can add our boot signature here. You know, DW for assemble word, basically. It will essentially just put this as binary straight into our file. That's what this DW does. And DW is for two bytes. Okay, so all I want you to do now then, I want you to go jump dollar. And obviously that will make sure that it will keep jumping to itself. So we'll keep jumping to line 10 here so that we never um, carry on running running down here and trying to execute our signature, which we really wouldn't want to do. Once you've done that, we are ready to assemble this and run it in QMU. So open up your folder. And right click, open in terminal. And we're just going to go NASM-F bin. So this means that we're assembling to binary. We don't want to assemble this to a object file. And the reason we want a raw binary output is because the processor has no concept of executable files. It has no concept of file formats, file systems. So it needs to be a binary file. So we're just going to go dot forward slash boot dot ASM dash o dot forward slash boot dot bin. And all a binary file is, guys, it's just a file without headers, right? Everything's condensed. There's no header. There's no header information. None of that stuff. It's just the raw code outputted. That's it. Okay, and uh, we can see it's output a file of zero bytes. That's because I didn't save the file. Remember to press Control S, guys. We're gonna go back, run that command again, and now you'll see 512 bytes boot boot sector here, right? And if we just go ndisasm dot forward slash boot dot bin, you know you'll see the disassembly output. Um, so you can see there's our assembly we wrote here, okay? And then we can see our infinite jump that jumps to itself. And then remember what I said about that times five ten thing? It's filled the rest of the bytes with zero, okay? the bytes we didn't use, and it fits it into 512 bytes. So it doesn't matter if we've only written a few instructions here, because this times 510 thing will ensure that it expands our boot sector all the way to 512 bytes, which is what it needs to be. Because remember, our boot signature needs to be at byte 511 and 512. Okay, now for the fun stuff, we're gonna actually run it. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go QMU system dash x86 64 dash HDA for hard drive dot forward slash boot dot bin. Just press enter. And what do you see there? We see a we have just made our very first boot sector that outputs a character a to the screen. You can see it by there. OK, cool. So just press control C here now then. 
and we're going to change this so it outputs a message instead. So just down by here, we're going to go message db hello world. Okay. So, you know, this is a label called message and we create some bytes here that say hello world and our null terminator at the end, as you know. We're going to take our code here that we've written and we're going to create a routine under start here, under our, under our infinite jump. We're just going to go print and we're just going to paste that in. Okay. And as a matter of fact, don't call it print, call it print char. So we're just going to change that to print char. Okay. And now just by here, we're going to go print. Okay. And then obviously our print will call print char. Now I want you to remove the, the move ALA. I want you to remove that. Okay. I want you to remove move BX zero. And we're just going to put move BX zero in our print. Okay. And down by here, I want you to do ret because this is now going to be a subroutine and we need to return from it. Okay, great. Now, before we do anything else, um, on line five here, we're just going to go move SI message. Okay, so SI is a register as well. Um, and we're, sen we're essentially saying move the address of the label message into the SI register, right? And then we're just going to go call print. So that'll print our message basically, right? Obviously now it doesn't, but it will. So we're just going to go ret by here to return from the subroutine for print, for when they call print. And we're just going to go lod, S, lod sb. And um, what the lod sb instruction will do, it will load the character that the SI register is pointing to, such as h for example. And it will load it into the al register and then it will increment the SI register. So then it points to E. And if we call lot SB again, it'll increment it again, it'll now point to L, and so on, so on. That is how lot SB works. And that is why we removed AL here, because lot SB loads that character um, from where the SI is pointing in memory, it loads it into the AL register. So in NASM, you can make sort of like these sub labels right labels that only apply to um, the label above them so how we do this is we just put a dot at the start of our label so we're just going to go dot done okay now just after lot sb we're going to go cmp for compare compare al with zero right and then we're going to say if it's equal to zero then jump to done JE, you know, jump equal. Now everything under this line is if AL is not zero. Um, because remember here we have our zero, which signifies the end of our string, right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna say call print char, okay? Now obviously this is gonna end up running into done and then we're gonna leave, we don't want that. So just just by here, we're going to have to make another sub label. We're going to call it dot loop. Okay. And then we're going to go jump dot loop by here. Okay. Now, let's just test this. And if it all works, I will explain it to you. So we're going to go back to our terminal. We are going to run our NASM command again. And we're going to run QMU again. And we see hello world amazing you just wrote your very first message out to the screen so how that works then let me let me explain it again we move the address of our message label into the si register okay we call our print subroutine which comes and jumps down here we set bx to zero for the page number and stuff right and then we call lod sb Lod SB says, okay, let's go here and um, see where our SI register is pointing. Our SI register is pointing here, so we take H, we put it into the AL register. Now we say, is the AL register zero? Well, it isn't zero, it's H. So um, we, we don't jump to done. Instead, we call print char, which jumps down here, sets AH to zero EH, because that is the function 
for outputting to the to the screen when when talking with our BIOS. We then call interrupt ZUX10, which will invoke the BIOS. The BIOS will see ZUEH. It knows we want to output a character. It takes the character from the AL register and it outputs it to the screen. Okay. At this point in time, the SI register is now message plus one, so it points at E. On the next loop around, because it goes jump loop, so it jumps back. On the, on the next loop around, we call lot SB again. It now loads E into the AL register. Is E zero? No, it isn't. So we call print char and it repeats until it gets to zero. And then we say compare AL to zero. Is it zero? Yes, it is. Jump to done and we call ret, which is uh, means return from subroutine. Thank you for watching this lecture. This is a preview from the Developing a Multi-Threaded Kernel from Scratch course. If you would like to buy the course, you can find a direct link to the course with a discount coupon in the video description. If you would like to keep watching these free previews, please also check the description of this video for the next part.